To put this gospel into context, the parable of the sower is a story about the extravagant generosity of God told by Jesus in three different gospels. In Matthew's account, both Jesus and his disciples sow the seed of God's word by proclaiming the good news that the kingdom of heaven is near. Hold the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil, and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. I'd like to begin the sermon today by putting an image up on the screen. So we'll get that image set up there. It's got a white background. Perfect. What do you see in that image. A word. It is actually the same graphic, but one is one way and the other is turned upside down. Do you see how it, oh, it's like a little illusion there. Depending on the orientation, one way says saint and one way says sinner. Now, there's actually a store called oldlutheran.com, maybe some of you have heard it, where you can buy a t-shirt with this graphic on it, just one, not both of them, just one graphic. And when you look down at yourself while wearing the t-shirt, guess what? It says sinner. But when someone else looks at you wearing that same t-shirt, they see saint. How often is it that way in our own lives? When we are focused on our mistakes and our flaws and the ways that we fall short, our sins. But how easy it is then for us to look at others and say, oh, they are an everyday saint. There's that tension that's there. It can be hard to see ourselves the way that God sees us. It can be easier sometimes to see the saintly nature of others around us. But of course, the flip side of this conversation is also true, that there are people out there who we may be quick to label as sinners, people whom it may be hard for us to see the saintly qualities in, for whatever reason, but often because of how our society and systems have pushed them to the side and labeled them for us. And that same metric is true here. It's just as important for us to see and recognize the everyday saint in ourselves as it is equally important to see and recognize the everyday saint in others as well. Because at the end of the day, We are all saints and sinners at the same time. Our friend Martin Luther called it simul justus et peccator, simultaneously saint and sinner 100% of the time. And that tracks. We actually talked about this at Pub Theology this past Wednesday at Immigrant Sun Brewery, that each of us as human beings has an incredible ability to be kind to one another, and also an equally incredible ability to be destructive toward one another. It's just how we are wired. This was one of the things that Luther was so adamant about during the Reformation. We cannot make ourselves perfect by perfect behavior or by paying for our salvation through indulgences because we are always going to fall short. 
saint and sinner at the same time. God is God, and we are not. Yet, God chooses to love us and never gives up on us, not because of anything that we do or don't do, but because of who God is. God's love and grace is pure gift, freely given to us, and so we spend our lives living in response to that free gift, making the world a better place because our lives have been transformed by God's grace. Sometimes we do a great job at being the people that God has made us to be. Sometimes we fall terribly short of being the people that God has made us to be. And this paradox of saint and sinner remains with us our whole lives until our baptismal promises are completed in death. As Luther would say, a saint by faith remains a sinner by nature. We are both at the same time. Now, acknowledging this reality and this tension and naming it is a part of what it means to be a Lutheran Christian. And to take this just a little bit further, I'd like to invite a voice of a fellow Lutheran Christian pastor, Pastor Nadia Bowles Weber, who's going to share a little bit more of this. The title of this video on YouTube is Lutheran Theology in 90 Seconds. And if you are joining us online, our online usher will put a link to this video in the comment section so you can view it as well. But this is a video of Pastor Nadia speaking to 35,000 Lutheran teenagers at an ELCA youth gathering a few years ago. Let's take a look. And uh, what I learned in the confirmation class blew my mind. Here's what I learned. God's grace is a gift that's freely given. We don't earn it. We just try and live in response to it. He taught me that nobody's climbing the spiritual ladder. I learned that no one's climbing the spiritual ladder, right? We aren't like continually self-improving like Tide detergent, right? Nobody's just getting better and better and better and better and better. But the God always comes to us and makes us new, and then makes us new again, and then makes us new again. And it's called death and resurrection. And that the, 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 the relationship we have to God, the movement's always this way. God's always coming to us. We don't make our way to God. And then he said this, he said, we're all simultaneously sinner and saint, 100% of both, all the time. And I thought, oh my gosh, I have an enormous capacity for destruction of myself and other people, but I have an enormous capacity for kindness too. And finally someone explained that to me. So you know why I'm a Lutheran? So you know why I'm a Lutheran? Because you are the first people in my life who gave me language for what I had experienced to be true. I had already experienced all of that to be true and you gave me language for it and I'm so grateful. And it changed my life. We have language for this. We are everyday saints and everyday sinners at the same time. It's like our Romans text outlines for us today. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and now we are justified by grace as a gift through Jesus Christ. And this gift causes us to live and move and breathe and think and act in a different way in the world. It changes our lives, transforms our lives. We can trust that God is going to use us as instruments of God's love and grace in the world, just as we are, as sinners and as saints. Now this is where our gospel lesson comes in for today. And this is a special gospel lesson for our faith community because this is our namesake gospel, Good Soil Lutheran Ministries. Notice in the story that the seeds that are sown go everywhere. Not because of who the seeds are, and not because of what the soil or context is, but because of who God is. 
an extravagant, abundant, generous God. God uses what God has. God uses us no matter what. God is at work in and through us and everyone else. All of us belong to God. All of us are created by God. All of us are in need of God's grace. And God gives that grace so freely, so generously, multiplying and growing what we bring for God's purposes in the world beyond what we could ever expect or imagine. And the first hearers of this gospel story would have picked up on this. We lose that a bit because we don't have the same agricultural mindset, but sevenfold harvest would have been considered a pretty adequate harvest. Tenfold would have been true abundance. Thirtyfold would have fed a village for a year. And a hundredfold is more than anyone could have imagined. One commentator said that if there was a hundredfold thar- harvest, that farmer could have quit their job and gone to live in a villa on the Sea of Galilee, never to work again. That is how much abundance we are talking about here. That's the kind of God we have. Let anyone with ears listen. The story doesn't end with a normal, sufficient harvest, but with a multiplied miracle one. And this may not have been the best agricultural business practice to just put those seeds wherever they may land, but God's economy is different than a business economy. The bottom line is different. It's about planting seeds of God's love and trusting that God is going to do something with them. God will bring the growth. Today is Intent Sunday at Good Soil. And we know and we trust that God multiplies not only our offerings, but everything that we bring and all that we are as people of faith. God takes who we are, just as we are, everyday saints and sinners, and puts them to use in God's economy. We are going to have a chance to do that together today during our potluck after worship. You see those baskets on the altar? We are having a multiplying ministry party after we enjoy our meal together. We were so blessed by Gary Dennison's estate gift. And our gift policy says we're going to tithe 10% of that estate gift. And each and every one of you who stay will be a part of deciding where some of that tithe goes. You'll be getting some good bucks in your sower's bag, and you'll be able to put your good bucks into the baskets and the organizations that are doing wider work and ministry in our world that you would like to support. Everyone is invited, and I hope that you will stick around. And if you live locally and you're watching online and you think that sounds fun, come join us too. To close, I invite you to bring out your little bags. You have two stones, and if you don't have one, please raise your hand and we'll get an usher to grab you one. Everybody should have a little bag with two stones. If you are able and feel comfortable, I invite you to open that bag and take both of those stones out. Does anybody need one? Okay. Oh, we need one back there? All right, we're going to hook you up. There are a few more right outside the door. So we'll get everybody a little bag. Do you guys need little bags too over there? Yeah, okay, everybody need to get those stones out. So if you already have your stones, hold up for me the one that to you... Um, says, falling short and sinfulness. And then hold up in your other hand. Uh, Michael, would you be willing to also bring some over to our musicians, please? And then hold in your other hand the stone that to you speaks about saintliness and being the people that God has made us to be. And there's no wrong or right answer. It can mean whatever one you want it to mean. Now hold each of them in your hands if your hands are free. And I invite us to pray together. Lord God, we are so grateful to be your people. 
And even so, we feel the weight and the tension of what it means to be both everyday saints and everyday sinners. Help us to lean into your grace for ourselves and for others. Help us to see each other and our own selves too as you see us. Help us to be the people that you call us to be, sharing your abundance and love with a hurting and hungry world and trusting that you will take what we have and multiply that impact beyond what we could ever imagine. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now if you would like, these fit great in pockets, if you have pockets. So if you'd like to put them in your pockets and carry them around, remind yourselves that you all of the time, 100% of the time, are God's sinner and God's saint, and a beloved child of God just as you are. Amen.